Hello everyone, today we have a new treat for the home lab. Let's open it up and see what it is. We got ourselves some packing peanuts. So this comes to us from a cool guy named Justin who messaged me on Reddit and offered it to me. Man, this thing is heavy. Oh, he chunky. There it is. It's backwards. This, that Justin kindly sent us, is an HP Microserver Gen 8. This was a sort of all-in-one small business server that HP sold quite a long time ago. And uh, it's gonna make a great test bed for storage. Open it up, we got four hot swap bays. Looks like Justin labeled this SDB, SDE, SDD, and SDC. So we got four hot swap bays. There are hard drives in here. If they survive, they're two terabyte WD reds. So not, not great, but uh, certainly perfectly fine for home labbing and for testing especially. At this age, I probably wouldn't trust them with production data, but I got some videos coming up about data redundancy and ZFS versus some other systems, so be perfect for making some ZFS pools. It's also got a DVD drive. Oh, this one doesn't have a DVD drive. It had the option for a DVD drive. Remember back when you had to install software from a disc? And how primitive. It's come around back and it's honestly pretty darn bare. We got a standard IEC power jack. Very thankful it's standard because you know how HP and Dell are with standards. We got two gigabit ethernet, got some USB 2, got some USB 3, VGA, it's classic, classic sysadmin stuff, and HP ILO. So even on this low end little cube server, we have lights out management, which most of the industry calls IPMI, but HP calls ILO because they're different. I am probably gonna do a video on Proxmox ethernet specifically, including things like bridges and bonds and LACP, and having two identical adapters is important for LACP. We have one half-height PCIe slot, and it's probably not gonna fit a GPU if you're hoping to do transcoding. Let's see what's inside. So what do we got in? Ooh, it's like a classic case. The whole thing comes off in one piece. For those of you who remember the beige box days, you would end up with a case hat like this. It's the side panels didn't come off separately. So Justin has upgraded this with two one terabyte 2.5 inch laptop drives. So the stock HP did not include these two drives on the side. And he said he hooked these two drives up on the side to the internal SATA ports. Deep inside there, we have an LSI SAS card. And this is running the IT mode firmware, which passes through each disk instead of doing hardware RAID. And so that's what some of the expansion saw. This also did not originally come with a server, but this gives me more SATA ports. So I have the two drives that Justin put in on the side Looks like there's an open SATA header that I think used to go to the CD drive. There's an internal USB port and a micro SD slot. I'm guessing it was supposed to boot for micro SD. And the PCIe slot is now filled by the LSI SAS card. So this has plenty of expansion for me with the six drives. I can add a USB drive, I can add a micro SD boot drive. I should have plenty of things to work with in Proxmox. If I really want to, I can replace the two spinning drives with SSDs to test SSD cache, things like that. All the kind of good stuff that everyone loves with ZFS. So let's get this thing hooked up and see what it looks like in Linux. I'm not actually gonna install Proxmox today, but I'm just gonna boot it up and see what kind of devices we have. Justin was kind enough to send along the static IP addresses he's configured for the ILO and Proxmox interfaces that he's already installed. I'm going to reinstall Proxmox anyway because I don't wanna have any of Justin's data even on accident, but we're gonna log into ILO and see what we see. So just connecting directly on the network, we get this connection is not private. Yeah, whatever. There we go. This should be get us to the, okay, local username, administrator. Okay, integrated remote console, HTML5. That's what I like to see. None of this Java bullshit. That looks like Proxmox VE to me. They actually never had a server before with IPMI or any of these kinds of things. So this is cool to me. Processors, Xeon E3, so that's a uh, Ivy Bridge, 
Let's see, 16 gigs, that should be perfectly fine. So apparently some versions of ILO have problems with keyboards and mice. You'd think that'd be a pretty basic thing, but it's a question that comes up on the HP forums, and I don't want to deal with it right now. So I got a keyboard and mouse. We're going to use the web console for our VGA and a real keyboard and mouse. It'll feel around back. Feels like a USB port. I got it. Look at that. Look at that. So let's see what our drives show up as. LSPCI, Ivy Bridge, PCI Express port, six port desktop SATA controller, Broadcom Gigabit, Broadcom Gigabit, Renesas USB 3 controller, Broadcom LSI, block devices. Okay, so SDABC. So according to this handy thing here, these four drives on the LSI card are supposed to be um, B, C, D, and E. Whew, got a big list. SDE, Western Digital. Okay, so E and F, SDE and SDF are my one terabyte drives on the side. SD, uh, A, B, C, and D are my two terabyte drives, so they are not matching the numbering scheme that Justin sent. USB generic flash disk is SDG, that would be my boot media. And SDH is coming up as the ILO internal SD card. Okay, that works. And how about Ethernet? Does this show any Ethernet devices? It's like your ENO1 and ENO2, at least on this Ubuntu kernel. So thanks everyone for tagging along with me as I play with this brand new system. I got some videos coming up on this involving ZFS, our very favorite file system. If you have any ZFS questions you'd like me to try to answer, I can try to answer them with this box and test that up. I plan on doing testing on Proxmox, but if TrueNAS would be more useful to you, I could do it in TrueNAS instead. I, they're both pretty equivalent. They both, I mean, ZFS on Linux is ZFS on Linux. It's just a little bit of a different GUI if you're doing it in Proxmox versus TrueNAS. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I got a link down below to my Discord server. Thanks to Justin for sending this along. This is a great help to the home lab. I'm very thankful for it. Looking forward to the many projects I can do with it in the future. If you have anything you'd like to see me do with this hardware, feel free to drop it down below. I got a link to my Discord as well. You can message me there if you have questions or suggestions for future videos. I always appreciate those. And as always, see you on the next adventure. You're going to need your own shelf. Kind of heavy. Not going to fit in the rack.